Hello all, Rick here with a brief breakdown on the planet Kitama that represents quite a great deal in the lore of the Star Trek universe despite not being featured that prominently. First off, Kitama itself is a planet located somewhere around the borders of the Klingon Federation and Romulan territories, although ownership of it has shifted between the two empires of the Klingons and the Romulan Star Empire before. It has traditionally been a Klingon colony, with the earliest recorded colonies established on its surface at least as early as 2255, with further development in 2266. It was an M-class planet, and one that was rather temperate, with vast oceans and spanning verdant mountain ranges and valleys. Not much else was seen of the planet, except that it is very Earth-like, and according to Apocrypha, only has just over 4,000 colonists living there, meaning much of its surface is likely untamed wilderness. In fact, we know there were areas where hunting was practiced by the Klingons who visited there, and that it was home to creatures capable of posing a threat to them, ideal for training and Klingon family getaways. As with most Klingon settlements, a hall was constructed on its surface that would house statues and monuments to Klingon victories and glory, a hall of heroes connecting to a chamber of conquest, depicting numerous achievements. Its proximity to both the Romulan Star Empire and United Federation of Planets made it an excellent choice to host talks and negotiations, and Camp Kitama was selected as the location for peace talks to replace the tenuous Organian Peace Treaty in 2293. These are the events of Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country. This planet became synonymous with Federation Klingon relations, and as such was lauded by many, especially on the Federation side of things. The early to mid 24th century, however, saw an increase in Romulan aggression, however, with them making forays into territories such as Narendra III and in 2346, Kitama. It was protected by a system of defensive satellites, however, the Star Empire had obtained codes from a Klingon traitor. Gerod and shut them down, allowing them to draw in for orbital bombardment. This event became known as the Kitama Massacre, and saw the deaths of Worf's parents, and the capture of many other Klingons. These captives were taken and interrogated by the Romulans, with plans to leverage their return for more territory. The Klingon High Council denied that offer, and the prisoners were taken to Karaya IV, where they eventually were allowed to live in a Romulan penal colony. Kitama, meanwhile, fell under the sway of the Romulans, and seemed to remain so until at least 2369. After this, it was returned to the Klingon Empire, around the time the Dominion began to present themselves as a threat, and by 2374 was a Klingon colony once more, or at least an allied one, as the Romulans, UFP and KDF were all working together. In canon, we know that it is now in Klingon territory and therefore probably their world again by 2399, but that's the end of it. In the Star Trek Destiny timeline, it came under attack in 2381 from the Borg, as part of their renewed push into the Alpha and Beta Quadrants, and then again later that year finally succumbing to the Cybal Gressors. However, in Star Trek Online chronology, they briefly came under Romulan occupation once more between 2381 and 82 before being seized back by the Empire. Chancellor Martok then ordered all the non-Klingons to leave the world, which was a sizeable amount, and General Mojog was put in charge of rebuilding Kitama. This move was seen as deeply unpopular by other powers, but I think by then the Klingons had just had enough of the Romulans stealing their planet from them. Then the Romulan supernova happened and shattered their star empire. In 2409, the splinter faction of displaced Romulans, calling themselves the Republic, reached out peacefully to the KDF as allies, and talks were held once more at Kitama, where the Republic was officially recognised as a new Romulan government. For four years since 2405, the Klingons had been at war with the Federation, after dissolving the Kitama Accords in protest to the UFP's condemnation of their attacks on the Gorn hegemony and their insistence that there were Species 8472 infiltrators within it. 
This was all the machinations of the Iconians from behind the scenes, and in the closing months of 2409, the Klingons and Starfleet put their differences aside to prepare for the oncoming threat of the 200,000 year old Empire returning in a vengeful storm. Some of these meetings to re-establish this alliance were held once more at Kitama, as it had been in 2293 with the first signing of the Peace Accords. It was just in time too, as it marks the reappearance of the Iconians and the beginning of their year-long war against the Milky Way. The renewing of the Kitama Accords was a prequel to the political power that was to follow. With the Delta Alliance already being formed from a collection of Delta Quadrant species, with the Federation and Romulan Republic at its core also being established in 2410, the foundation of cooperation was already there to extend this alliance into something larger in the Crucible of War. With the eventual defeat of the Iconians, the Accords formed the basis for a new alliance, the Kitama Alliance, primarily between the UFP, KDF and Republic. Again, the signing of this historic partnership was held, where else, but Kitama. A new symbol was created to signify this alliance, a split arrow, evoking both the Starfleet Delta and the Sword of Kalis emblem of the Empire. Then there was the Alliance Fleet. This was an experiment at first, and is still in its early stages. The notion was to create a unified navy of all its members and allied forces to undertake joint missions with a token amount of officers and warriors from several departments and backgrounds, sort of like how the Federation Starfleet was formed. It was issued its own uniform, equipment, and in 2411 a new starship was also commissioned, one that was built through the development of both Starfleet and KDF engineers and shipwrights, and in honour of the new alliance, it was christened the Kitama class. Its design making the most of both the robust firepower of a Klingon vessel and the multi-role utility favoured by Starfleet. Kitama itself became the home to the Alliance Operational Command, and its halls were renamed from the Kitama traditions to the more inclusive Alliance designations. Understandably, many Klingons bristled at this, and those tensions were eventually stoked into a full-scale civil war in early 2411, but the Klingons have never done well in peace times. The site came under attack again, however, during a false flag operation. Actually, now I think about it, there's seldom been a conference at Kitama that has not ended in violence in some fashion, from the attempted assassination in 2293 to similar events in the other tales. Where the legacy of Kitama goes in the primary canon remains to be seen, but personally, I think the direction it went in STO is better than being a victim of the Borg as depicted in Destiny. Despite this, in canon it is a historic symbol of cooperation between the Klingons and Federation peoples, giving rise to not only the Accords, but heroes such as Worf, even through such tragedy. The Apocrypha tends to re-establish this place as equal amounts of woe to go with its wheel. As a symbol of unity, it makes a good narrative target to highlight the state of the galaxy, and the site may traditionally be Klingon, but it is one celebrated by the UFP as a representation of everything it stands for, showing that even among cultures so vastly different, cooperation is possible and diplomacy is the inevitable end result of any conflict. I've been Rick. Thanks for watching this breakdown of the planet Kitama in canon and how it was further depicted in Apocrypha. Thanks again, and goodbye.